Utah, 43, and USC, 42. Now, uh, this one, you want to talk about crazy. Uh, Utah is a fascinating football team. Utah, USC uh, kind of went up on them early, right? Um, this, so there was a lot of scoring in the first half and then not nearly as much in the second half, which is kind of reversed from what you usually see. But when a game gets tight like this, you you sometimes do see it where they play a little more conservatively or the defenses get a little more aggressive. And that's kind of what we had here. You had a ton of... Of yardage, and yes, I mean you did have a ton of points here, forty-three to forty-two in favor of Utah. Uh, let's look at the actual stats. I'm going to pull them up on the screen, and we've got. Let's see, uh, this is the stat broadcast version. Uh, you know, here while I'm actually reading off, I'll show you this. You see the win probability. It was in favor of USC all the way through until the very end. Like a USC had taken control of this thing early and had held on to it until Utah grabbed it back. Um, Utah did win yardage of 562 to 556. They won drive points 43 to 35. USC won yards per play 8.1 to 7.3. Utah did run eight more plays than they did, 77 to 69. Uh, Yeah, USC won third downs 56 to 54 percent. They won rushing 175 to 138. They won turnovers one to nothing, but USC did have two fourth down failures. Again, you look at the team stats. Uh, everything looks good. Everything's green, except for defensive front stuff rate and havoc rate. And havoc rate, USC actually did better than Utah. Utah's defense was not good. And that's the biggest question that we've got about this team is, why can Kyle Whittingham's team not figure out what to do on defense? I mean, it's kind of mind-blowing. Uh, I will say, you know, for the people that jumped in my mentions last night that were discussing the uh, officiating in this game, it was not a one-sided officiating game. Uh, this was a just bad officiated game. Very badly, very poorly officiated. And it hit on both sides. I mean, it was just all over the place. These Pac-12 referees are putrid. And you will see John Wilner and other guys like that talk about it. But there's no real solution that they can come up with right now. These guys are still, they're not full-time referees and, and the way that the Pac-12 office does this, they, they're they still trying to get a grasp on exactly how to filter in guys. They don't have a pipeline of guys that understand how to call games in the Pac-12, right? You don't move up from the Mountain West, et cetera. So that's that's where it becomes a just a huge issue because it, it continues on over and over and over again uh, because you have these games frequently. Just nuts. Uh, Cam Rising was 29 out of 43 for 415 yards passing, had two touchdowns, and he also ran the ball 11 times for 60 yards and three touchdowns. He also had that two-point conversion at the end of the game that was just, I mean, just sheer will. Absolute sheer will. Uh, Travis Dye, 11 carries for 76 yards. Uh, Williams was eight carries for 57 yards. Uh, Addison had two carries for 27. And you look at the receiving yards. Uh, so Caleb Williams, by the way, 25 out of 42 passing, 381 with five touchdowns. Just had a monster, monster night. Uh, as far as the receivers go, Addison had seven uh, for 106 yards with one touchdown. Uh, uh, Williams, excuse me, had four receptions for 145 yards. And, and so where is uh, Michael Jackson Jr.? Uh, no, Michael Jackson the third. There we go. His one reception, 20 yards and a touchdown late in the game to take the lead. I mean, it was <laughs> it was awesome to see. This was this was such a fun game to close the night on uh, because there was so much passion in this one. As far as Utah's receivers, I, we talked about losing Keithy and how big of a deal that is because everything basically ran through him. And I said, not only on this show, but on the BetUS college football show as well, look, Dalton Kincaid can do everything that Keith could do, Right. 100% everything that he could do had 15 catches for 217 yards and one touchdown. He was an absolute monster in this game. Absolute monster. So, you look at what happened in this ball game. I don't think USC is out of the playoff picture with a loss here. It is so, so difficult 
to win a game in Salt Lake City, especially at night. Rice Eccles Stadium, with all the stuff that was going on with the tributes to the fallen players, like all of that, it was a massive, massive deal. I don't think that this is going to cost USC really anything. Like, yeah, they'll fall in the polls for now. If they go out and keep winning, should not have any kind of an issue moving forward. But I got to tell you, it was strange to see. Uh, just a bunch of ranked teams just uh, getting knocked out of this one. The I, I showed you the win probability. Yeah, uh, it just flipped on a dime there. At USC was basically expected to win this game all the way up until the last uh, eight plays. I mean, yeah, that's when it flipped. Like, uh, that two-point conversion is basically the only time that the numbers would have told you that Utah had a chance to win. That's it. So, we will uh, we will move off of Utah, and let's move to TCU. Now, this was a bonkers game. Absolute bonkers game. Uh, zone 6, yeah, Utah now has won 23 of the last 24 at home. Yeah, the only one that they did not lose in that time span was 2020 to USC, right? They, they are insane in Salt Lake City. Really, really good football team. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.